This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. We have King Kim Dumas and Len Augsburger here. That's going to they're going to give us uh, what's new at the Newman Portal, uh, both user usability and uh, also Kim is going to speak specifically about uh, some technologies that she uses over in St. Louis. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it because uh, I want them to talk about it. So please, Len, Kim, it's all yours. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Um, well, it's always good to be in New York. Um, people uh, tend to have a love or hate relationship with New York. Personally, <laughs> I love it. Uh, but uh, when we submit our uh, travel expense reports to the business office at the university, it's uh, not so much love it. But <laughs> that being said, um, so today uh, we're going to talk about uh, Newman Portal, uh, focusing a little bit on uh, usability and how to find things. And uh, we've got our crack AV staff, uh, Ben Hibner and Alan Roche, uh, are uh, producing us today. And uh, if you follow the ANS magazine, you know the highlight of the year is seeing the uh, graduate summer seminar pictures, which uh, Alan was working on yesterday. Um, so that's that's always fun, and it'll be uh, great to see what he's got cooked up for us this year. All right, so let's uh, jump into it. Right. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a quick overview of NNP, and then uh, Kim's going to talk about some of our scanning technology um, at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, um, and then we're going to focus um, a lot on uh, usability, how the portal's organized, and uh, how to effectively use search on the portal. Okay, so we went live in uh, 2016. Uh, we are funded by the Eric P. Newman Numismatic Education Society, uh, which I will refer to as EPNIS. Um, of course, they've uh, been uh, involved at ANS for a long time uh, and have endowed the uh, ANS graduate uh, seminar. And uh, EBNES is uh, one of uh, several uh, foundations uh, that the uh, Newman family works with. Um, our project is administered by Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, the Newman family has long-standing relationship with the university. Of course, uh, Eric P. Newman uh, graduated from the law school in 1935. Uh, Andy Newman is uh, currently serves on the board of trustees. And uh, in addition to uh, Newman Portal, uh, the uh, Newman family has uh, founded other uh, capital projects at the university. So uh, there are two of us uh, employed by the university. Uh, myself, the uh, Newman Portal Project Coordinator, and uh, Kim Dumas is our digitization supervisor, uh, and we are uh, working uh, under the uh, Olin Library umbrella at the university. Okay, so what is NNP? It's, it's an online library. Uh, we, we scan auction sale catalogs, periodicals, uh, we collect uh, multimedia material, uh, scan books, uh, work with archival items, and uh, make this uh, all available uh, through the, the Newman Portal. Um, a lot of the content that we have is unique to Newman Portal. Um, it's not material that these large aggregators like Google Books and Hadi Trust have gotten to. Um, it just, it's just, it's underneath their radar. Um, a lot of the publications we work with might have print runs of you know, 100, 200 copies, and they simply don't have access uh, through the large repositories and libraries that they, they work with. A lot of this material is held directly by researchers and collectors. And uh, secondly, we're really uh, a community built site. Um, we've had over 150 uh, individual contributors and organizations, uh, including the ANS prominently, uh, who have contributed content to us. Um, so, you know, obviously we don't have access to everything directly ourselves, so the community um, contributes or, and loans material to us for scanning. Um, it's, it's all nonprofit, there's no advertising on the site, um, no passwords, 
and uh, our scanning operations are in St. Louis at Washington University, um, here in New York at the ANS, and then the uh, National Archives locations, uh, primarily in Philadelphia. Okay, so what are we not? We are not a peer-reviewed academic journal. Um, we're, we're a library, and you uh, consult uh, NNP resources the same way you would uh, work with any library material. Um, and then we're also not a substitute for a physical library. Um, for really long-term archival preservation, uh, print has a track record of 500 years. Uh, we're not anywhere close to that. And in fact, you know, we've seen over the last 20, 30 years, uh, <clears throat> uh, digital formats um, can become obsolete. Um, I'm working with uh, a CDI right now produced by Philips in the early 1990s. Um, it's called The Riches of Coins. Um, it uh, has video footage of uh, Dick Doty and Eric P. Newman and a lot of material from the Smithsonian Collection in Washington, D.C. We cannot get this thing digitized. Um, we're pulling our, hair, pulling our hair out. We even bought an old CDI player to try and play it. So. Um, we're, I'm going to try and uh, crowdsource this today, so if anyone has a digitization solution for uh, CDIs, we would really love to uh, make this available. And uh, I've talked to the Smithsonian about it. They'd love to see it, too. Um, but it's got some great footage on it, I'm sure, from the Smithsonian in the early 1990s. So um, we don't have that problem with print. Um, it always works. And uh, as I noted, for the last several years, several hundred years, has been solid. Okay, so let's talk about work, our work at a and um, The work here is done by uh, Internet Archive uh, under sponsorship of NNP. And uh, Laura Jacobs uh, works for Internet Archive and uh, works with the ANS librarian David Hill. Um, and to date, we have scanned over 15,000 items in, in the ANS library. And uh, these are linked through the library catalog. Uh, we'll have an example of that later. Um, so that if you pull up something in the ANS library catalog, um, sometimes there'll be a scan copy you can consult directly. All right, um, and just talk briefly about some of the material we've scanned at ANS. And uh, we presented in this forum uh, last year and uh, talked about some of these. So I'll go through these quickly. We have uh, a several hundred volume run of the early American auction sale catalogs. Uh, we've done the uh, Virgil Brand Ledgers, a very important American collection from early 20th century. Um, and uh, we've done the Norweb collection archives. Uh, Norweb, of course, uh, both uh, Henry and his wife were closely associated with ANS and uh, found some interesting things like uh, Emery May's uh, coin rubbings uh, of uh, early American coins um, among these papers. Uh, this is an example of uh, the Norweb collection ledgers um, uh, describing uh, an inventory of their collection. All right, uh, New Netherlands was an important uh, New York auction company uh, in the mid 20th century. Um, their ar archives have been here uh, since the early 90s, uh, including bid books, invoices, uh, correspondence. Um, and this material has all been digitized and is available on NNP. All right, another item we did recently, the uh, Charles Barber papers. Uh, these uh, were acquired by Stax and contributed to the Smithsonian uh, with photocopies provided to several institutions. And we were able to uh, scan the uh, ANS uh, set of these. Uh, the Chapman Papers, a uh, really important ANS uh, archival collection. Um, we have a lot of their early correspondence, um, press copy books of outgoing correspondence, um, and this uh, in combination with some of the other Chapman material we have, uh, particularly the, the bid books uh, that were loaned to us for scanning by uh, ANS board member Dan Hamelberg uh, makes this a uh, very useful repository for Chapman information. All right, uh, the Garrett Collection, another uh, multi-generational collection. 
Um, we have uh, correspondence and notebooks from them in the uh, ANS uh, archival holdings that we've scanned. And then most recently, we've been working on the ANS member correspondence uh, from uh, inception of the ANS uh, in the 1850s through the 1930s. Uh, this collection has grown up to 4,000 correspondence. I, I couldn't believe that number. I had to double check it, but that is correct. Um, uh, we tend to think of the early years as, of the ANS as small and very clubby. Uh, there were a lot of people uh, involved with the organization in one capacity or another. Okay, um, Kim is going to talk about some of the things happening in the scanning lab in Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, we've gotten some uh, new equipment in the last year or two and some pretty exciting things happening there. So Kim, I'll turn it over to you. All right. So hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. Today I am here to discuss the Digital Transitions BC100 and also the MISHA which is the multispectral imaging system that we have uh, temporarily. Go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so the BC100 is a dual camera system that consists of two 100 megapixel IXH cameras, um, two monitors, uh, two um, LED photon lights with continuous lighting, just like the DT Titan, um, the Shirley, which we talked about um, last year. Also an adjustable large V-shaped cradle and foot pedals as well. Um, it can digitize bindings up to six inches and also scan documents up to 16 by 22 inches at 400 ppi and then also 14.5 by 19 inches at 600 ppi um, the best thing about this system is that it also uses the same uh, system as our dt titan which is the capture one software um, it produces preservation grade tiffs jpegs and also pdfs um, as you can see, uh, we have someone from the New York Public Library digitizing a large object under the pressurized book cradle. While shooting on the BC100, all operators must use foot pedals to lift the platen up and down, which are connected to an air compressor that we have in the back um, after capturing the both uh, left and right page images. Once the images are shot, they will be placed in their individual sessions, and then a third session will be created later in post-processing in order to combine uh, the left and right page images. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna discuss um, br very briefly is MISHA. MISHA stands for Multispectral Imaging Systems for Humanities and Archives. Um, this machine was developed at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, as mentioned before, it's only temporary. It's a demo system that was loaned to us and a few other universities to introduce a new method that will not only help with the discovery and recovery of lost texts, but it will also help universities to better understand uh, their collections. Um, as a general function, uh, Misha uses special LED light and lighting and cameras with sensors that are sensitive enough to interpret the various types of wavelengths on an electromagnetic spectrum that would not otherwise be seen by a naked eye. As shown in later slides, the UV and infrared parts of the most useful um, are most useful when it comes to recovering lost text. Um, as you can see, the images on the screen um, those are two colors that the LED lights produce. So you have reds, blues, greens, uh, yellows, and so on. So while shooting, uh, Mitra will capture 16 images to be exact at different wavelengths. The images will then get combined using the spectral analysis software archive um, and build cubes that will have various combinations of color prisms or bands. Uh, we can move on. And um, as you can see, examples are shown on this slide and also the next slide that we have. Um, this is an example of a thermal fax paper uh, dated around 1990. Um, that is a part of the Joy Williams papers at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, the image on the left is what the original um, 
fax page would look like if seen in person. And then the image on the right um, was the best combinations of bands that we could come up with um, within the spectral analysis software. So um, another, this is another example of an image that was shot on Misha. Um, it is an example of a book plate that can be found inside the front cover of the book, um, an inquiry into the manner of creating peers. Uh, the leaf had been washed at the time of publication to be used as a scrapbook for binding. Um, most of the text was able to be recovered using the best combinations of bands, as you can see um, in the image in the right. Um, that is all of the text that was found and discovered once we placed it under Misha and we ran the uh, software and, um, you know, um, messed with a few bands and um, played around with the different um, color, coloring of the RGB and multispectral bands. And it, as you can see, it produced the text that we were looking for. Okay. All, right. All right. Thanks, Kim. All right. So we're going to jump into uh, using Newman Portal. So there's really sort of um, two main use cases uh, when you approach Newman Portal. One is you have a document in mind that you're looking for, uh, a periodical or uh, an auction sale catalog or a book. Um, and what I'm going to recommend for this first case is directly navigating to the document. Um, and, and we'll go through um, a few examples of that. Um, and then the second uh, way you approach this is you want to do a, a, a text search across the whole collection. Um, and there are a couple different flavors of that, um, and I think aren't necessarily widely used and um, deserve more publicity. So we'll go into some examples. Okay, so uh, the, the first guiding principle is um, everything on the website falls into a hierarchy. Um, it's a, the, the site is designed to do that. So uh, when you enter a new document, uh, you've got to enter it into uh, a particular uh, place within that, that document tree. Um, and so this uh, is navigated via the library link on the front page. So and then there will be a drop down on the library to uh, auction companies, uh, periodicals, books, uh, archival collections. So in terms of the collection of holdings, uh, the major portions are periodicals and um, auction sale catalogs. So those are typically what you would be navigating to um, from the, the library on the front page. All right, and then uh, within auction companies, uh, 13,000 sale catalogs are on the site. Um, periodicals, uh, 36,000 uh, plus issues representing uh, 640 titles. Uh, we do have a biographical database on there, um, which is uh, edited uh, by Pete Smith, uh, author of American Numismatic Biographies. So that's also a good place to look if you need quick uh, biographical information on uh, someone with a numismatic connection. Other, subcate other sub subcategories, uh, the books by author, there's about 1,600 books on there. Um, a lot of us tend to refer to books by the name of the author. Um, I'm not even sure I could tell you the titles of the books I've written, um, but generally uh, you think of uh, people's work and you refer to the, the book by the author's name. So we have books by author, uh, a link there uh, from the top level. And then within archives, um, that includes manuscript material, correspondence, uh, the Newman papers are all listed under there. We have a lot of uh, content from National Archives uh, holdings of U.S. Mint and Bureau of Engraving and Printing um, archival materials. Okay, so first example, ANS Magazine, it's periodical, drill down library periodicals. ANS Magazine, um, and that's available through 2021 on the site. Um, if you want more current issues, um, you should be a member. Um, I think probably everyone on the call is a member, but uh, if you're not, shame on you um, and uh, get that taken care of. All right, the uh, numismatic notes and monographs, again, uh, periodical series. 
Um, we have the whole run on there from 1920 to 2009. Uh, you access uh, from the top level uh, via libraries, periodicals, and then uh, numismatic notes and monographs. Uh, so within auction sale catalogs, another example, uh, if you're looking for Hirsch catalogs, uh, we have a small group. Um, but again, the navigation from the top page, starting with the library, go through auction companies, and then Hearst. We've got about uh, 26 sales on there from the early 20th century. Uh, this is a group that actually ANS digitized, I think, probably about 10 years ago, even before NNP existed, and then uh, later shared the files with us. Uh, Stacks Bauer is a, a major holding, uh, almost a thousand sales in addition to all the coin gallery sales, which is another several hundred. Um, but again, the top level navigation is uh, just auction companies and Stacks Bowers, and there's a couple hundred other auction companies listed there as well. Um, and then uh, after you go to Stacks Bowers, there's a year picker. Um, in the case where you know uh, specifically which catalog you're looking for. All right, and then uh, example of the archival, archival material, we talked about the Barber papers, um, and nav navigation is fairly straightforward, uh, just from library to archives and then the Barber. Um, and there's a, a box of material there with about 20 folders. Uh, the folder names will uh, match up with the, the way the ANS has uh, categorized these um, since they were scanned here. All right, in books, um, we're currently uh, adding volumes to uh, Andrew Pollack's uh, tabular guide to United States National Banks, uh, which he's been uh, working to and uh, adding volumes to over the last uh, three, four years. And the navigation is books by author uh, and then Pollock. And uh, he's uh, contributed 36 volumes to that series. OK, so we've talked about the navigation. Um, again, if you're looking for a specific book, periodical auction catalogs, um, You'll find it most quickly by just drilling down from the top menu. The other major use case uh, for Newman Portal is you want to search across the whole thing. Um, and so there are a couple nuances here that I want to uh, drill into. The searches that you enter from uh, the search bar that's prominent uh, at the top of the front page, um, these are exact text searches. Um, so, if you enter numismatic notes and monographs there, what you're going to find are all instances of that exact text in, in, in all documents. And probably what you actually want is you want to go to those um, uh, actual journals. And in, in that case, the uh, you know, drilling down and navigating from the front menu is, is going to be the best way to access those. Um, now, we have another form of search, uh, which I think is really underutilized, and we'll go through a couple examples. Um, but if you go through this uh, power search capability, um, instead of finding the exact text match, what you'll find is um, all pages that have occurrences of those words somewhere on the page. Um, so for example, if you uh, enter a search for Horde and Kentucky, um, you'll get pages containing both of those words that would have information about words in Kentucky. Um, and of course, uh, you know, including the, the most recent one that's in, that's in the media right now. Um, so this uh, search capability is uh, accessed from the front page uh, via the advanced search dropdown. Um, oops. And uh, there's an advanced search on the uh, at the top towards the right side of the page. Um, just click that, and then there will be a drop down menu. Go into Power Search. Um, all right, so here here's an example of this. Um, say I'm looking for information on uh, this uh, Ephesus uh, uh, Phanes Electrum Stator. 
Um, if my pronunciation is off, uh, forgive me, I'm neither Greek nor an ancient numismatist. Um, but in any case, uh, this coin dates to about 600 BC, first coin with an inscription. Um, Again, I'm not uh, an ancient numismatist, so um, don't ask me to read the inscription. But in any case, this is uh, uh, well known and uh, listed in Harlan Burke's uh, 100 Greatest Ancient Coins. Um, so if you enter this search from the front page, um, you're only going to get one match. Um, it's going to be limited. Um, but if you go in through this power search capability and you say, you know, give me all the pages that contain these words somewhere. Um, you'll get a lot more results. Um, uh, so for in this example, we, we have results in the numismatist. test. We have results in uh, auction sale catalogs from uh, Heritage and uh, Numismatic Fine Arts and CNG. Um, and you learn very quickly, well, there's different types of these things. Like uh, it was like a 124th stater and uh, you get different um, citations of these in auction catalogs and so forth. So um, in this situation, you can get a lot more information with this um, power search capability. Um, here's another good one. Um, you know, say I want information on this group of uh, Islamic coins that uh, Newman donated to the ANS in uh, around 1970. Um, and this is kind of a funny thing because uh, Newman, of course, was uh, more involved in American numismatics. And, uh, you know, while he did have uh, world coins and, and paper money in his auction sales, uh, those were primarily devoted to American material. Um, but you know the question is okay so how do you find information about this so i i just entered this power search says give me the pages that have newman gift islamic american numismatic society on them um and i get uh some really uh, nice material uh that takes me back to the newman correspondence with uh george miles who's a curator of ans and uh robert morris who was the collector that uh, assembled this collection um, and uh, if, if you take those results and uh, go get some images from uh, the ANS uh, online coin catalog Mantis, um, you easily have uh, sufficient source material to put together a nice article for uh, ANS magazine or other publication. So um, if, if that tickles anyone's ear, I'm sure uh, uh, the ANS editorial uh, group would uh, <laughs> love to have an article on that. A um, lot, a lot of good information on that specific donation there. All right, uh, an unnamed project from our friend uh, Ken Brissett, which will be revealed in due course. Um, but you know, same kind of situation. Uh, you know, he said, "Hey, Len, I'm looking in for information on this," and uh, he gives me a few keywords, and uh, I go into the uh, the power search and uh, get some good citations for him from 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 uh, CoinWorld and the Numismatist, also from uh, very specialty club journals. This was really interesting. Um, no one else has all these different club journals uh, aggregated. Um, and uh, when, you, when the project's revealed, you'll, you'll understand more why that's important. But um, in, in any case, I'm, I'm sure he'll have, a, he'll have an article on this topic out uh, in due course. So, but uh, we were able to give him some good information. Okay, um, so I'm going to go through some just some other hints on using the site. Um, this came up uh, in the uh, ANA summer 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 seminar a couple weeks ago. I was just uh, demoing the site and uh, talked about the viewer. I think a lot of people are probably not using this and should be. But in any case, if if you're on NNP and uh, you pull up a document, you'll have kind of a smaller viewer. It doesn't fill up the whole page. Um, you can get to a full page view of this. Um, and if you uh, right click uh, on the document title in the viewer um, and select open in new tab. Um, it'll take you to the uh, Internet Archive viewer, uh, which has a little bit more capability than the one that's on our site directly. Um, so from the NNP viewer, you know, you just right click in that title up there and uh, open up the, the image in a new tab and then 
uh, then I'll take you to the Internet Archive Viewer. You can go full screen. You can uh, expand. Uh, and I, I do this kind of instinctively. Um, and, and I think more users will, too, if, uh, if you start using it this way. So this is definitely uh, one thing I recommend in, in terms of, uh, of actually viewing documents. All right. A um, couple hints on object searches. Uh, one thing I found is um, instead of entering uh, a random object name, which may be rendered a lot of different ways, um, if there's a catalog number for the object, um, that is a good way to find things. So, for example, um, that's 34, uh, early metal uh, related to American history. It's a 1632 Maryland settled metal with uh, portraits of uh, Lord uh, Baltimore and uh, Anne Arundel. Um, and in searching for th these things, the catalog numbers will just be much more consistent than, than other terminology. So if you search for the catalog name uh, directly, um, it tends to be more successful. Uh, the other thing you can try is entering inscriptions from the object itself. Um, again, it's a exact, a precise uh, uh, attribute of, of the object. Um, at this particular medal, uh, Scott Miller is working on, uh, funded uh, by a grant from EPNIS. And uh, when I entered this uh, in NMP, I got 10 citations um, in the Metal Collector's Advisory and the Maryland Numismatist. Um, I, I suspect some of those uh, Metal Collector's Advisory articles might have been written by Scott already, so maybe not so helpful to him, but uh, the stuff in the Maryland Numismatist might be uh, more useful. So. Scott, if you're out there, just uh, a hint. <laughs> OK, um, another uh, example, um, Bramson 516. Bramson is a well-known catalog of Napoleon medals. Um, if you just enter that directly, um, it'll uh, take you to the uh, information on this uh, Conquest of Naples medal. Um, and. Uh, if you entered Conquest of Naples directly, you, you might not uh, get as good results. Um, but anyway, uh, I got four search results on this, including um, a uh, NAC catalog from May of 2018, uh, which turns out to be like a really important resource for Napoleon medals. Um, so thanks to uh, Shanna Schmidt and uh, the folks at NAC for uh, their help with that content. Um, we do have uh, most of their auction catalogs on uh, NNP. Okay, another thing we run up occasionally is uh, the, the, uh, the famous unattributed clip, um, and uh, NNP is just a godsend for tracking these things down. So in this case, you know, I have this random piece of paper, where is it from? Uh, you might recognize the, the, the typography and say, well, it's probably, uh, you know, Coin World or Numismatic News, but, you know, uh, what else can you figure out? So, uh, what I do in these cases is, uh, you know, just find some unusual wording uh, in in the uh, uh, in the clip, and uh, in this case, uh, it gives us a single search result and points us to Coin World, and uh, we can uh, attribute where this piece of paper came from. Um, I saw a really interesting presentation a couple weeks ago. They were doing this with uh, early American paper money that had been backed with um, various things. And uh, because of these uh, search capabilities we have today, they could attribute the, the paper that was used to back these notes. Um, in some cases, you know, almanacs or uh, a Bible. Um, so it's just fascinating to see um, how these uh, scrap papers get picked up in other contexts. OK. Uh, 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 as always, with the ANS library catalog, we do link uh, uh, the, the library catalog donum um, to uh, scans that we've made. So there are about 8,000 entries in donum that are linked to uh, the actual scan copies. Um, for example, the uh, Glenn Dinning auction sale catalogs um, from uh, 1901 through 2001 are linked on there. Um, now, we didn't mention earlier we'd scanned about 15,000 documents here. Um, a lot of those are archival. So uh, those may not have individual entries in donum, so that's why the, the 8,000 number here is, is different. 
Um, but th this is a powerful tool, especially for a, a lot of US stuff. Um, you go look it up in the ANS library catalog and uh, then you can access the, the documents directly. Um, so this is the uh, Glenn Denning sale example from 1922. And um, this is the uh, ANS library catalog record. And then uh, at the bottom there, you'll see in the online resources uh, link to Internet Archive. In some cases, there will be multiple copies. So there may be multiple links there, uh, especially for these uh, early American auction sale catalogs. A lot of times they contain uh, unique annotations. Um, so basically each copy ends up uh, being uh, different or important in some way. So, um, so we've scanned multiple copies where it makes sense to do that. Okay, um, another hint on searching for video. Uh, there is a link on the front page, uh, the advanced search link, um, and it will uh, let you look for uh, specific types. So I, I usually, uh, I've used this for multimedia stuff a lot, but you can select the multimedia from the drop down, enter your search term. Um, I tried one this morning um, on uh, Donald Partrick. Um, and uh, this was kind of a private individual, and I, I thought it was fascinating that we actually had a video of him from uh, 1993 talking about the um, history of the ANS. So uh, you can enter under other individual names in there. Um, I was hoping to find one on Harry Bass. I didn't, but maybe it's out there somewhere. Um, but we do have uh, a, a lot of uh, individuals. Uh, on there, and, and of course, the, the basis for this library is the uh, David Lazo work that began in the 1980s, where he was uh, going around to different conventions and just taping all of the speakers. So we have about uh, 40 years of his work on there, um, just covering a lot of uh, uh, people that maybe aren't with us anymore, but you can still get a really good sense uh, for these people and their personalities from uh, watching the, the video that we still have. All right, so uh, NNP, we do have this uh, dial a friend built in, which is the email there, NNP curator at wustl.edu. So if uh, you need uh, a copy of a Coin World article on a Saturday night, there's a good chance you can actually get it. So um, please do take advantage of that. Um, I answer user questions all the time. and. Uh, definitely uh, encourage people to uh, reach out with specific research queries or if they can't find something. Um, I got a request this morning, a person was looking for uh, a, colonial, a colonial paper money inventory. We're able to take care of that. So uh, please do uh, contact me when you get stuck. All right, so we are going to turn it over to the questions and I see one up there already. Is there an online tutorial on how to best utilize the various search features of Portal? Um, yeah, so that I mean that, that that's really what the, this this was uh, focused on this morning. Um, so uh, you know, obviously this this will be posted and um, and be made available. Uh, so uh, you can work through the examples in there. All right. Okay. Uh, how sensitive is the search to perfect spelling, exact text match, or possibly misspelling? Yeah. Um, and related that way is a way to report errors. There are ways of which you can do looser searching with variable spelling. They take a lot longer. Um, and it's probably best to email me directly about that. Um, it can be done. Um, so yeah, I, I probably should have included an example here. Um, and second to that, relate, is there a way to report errors? Um, what we can do, um, we can go in and um, edit the OCR files directly. Uh, it's not something we've done very often, but it has come up a couple times. Um, so yeah, we can do that. 
Uh, but normally the, the OCR happens um, all automatically and it's not something we get involved with too much. Um, how about a paid capability to print out a coin world, world article? Okay, um, so let's talk about coin world. Um, uh, it is uh, owned by uh, uh, Amos Media, commercial presence. Um, they have not chosen to make past articles available, um, something that might happen in the future if there's a business case for it. Um, what we have done is under library fair use, we will share um, selected uh, articles from Numismatic News and Coin World, and for that matter, any any resource that's uh, restricted. Uh, we're not going to give somebody a whole issue. We're not going to give somebody access to the whole thing. Uh, but if there is a specific article, uh, we will uh, send you uh, a scan of, of uh, that that section of the page, uh, which we can do under library fair use and. This actually doesn't come up very often, but you know we have done a few of these. Um, so yeah, if you see something on there, um, just uh, email me and uh, I can get that to you. Yeah, I believe there are a couple of clips that we've digitized, just small clips, but it's never the whole issue where we always make sure to scan them as um, yeah. restricted items. Right. Um, Oh, and that, someone points out the ANS library will also um, give the same uh, uh, access to Coin World articles. Um, so if you're a member of ANS and uh, you have a specific thing you're looking for, they can uh, get you uh, a scan of that page. May I ask a question, please? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Al Bornaguro here, um, big fan of the site been working the brand material for quite a while now and boy, there's a lot more than the ledgers the Chicago coin company there are all the Burdett Johnson um, invoices of brand material you can really do a lot on the brand collection at the site my, my hats off to you for all you've you've put out there um, my question is about foreign catalogs any chance of adding more, I'm particularly thinking of the Jacques Schulmans. Uh, I'm a big user of Gaelica at the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale. They've got a lot there, but it's not terribly well organized, although they have a great search function uh, within a particular catalog <laughs> once you're able to find it. And um, so I'm just wondering if there are any plans to add more of the foreign catalogs beyond the Hirsch stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and we have a long <laughs> queue at, at the ANS. But uh, one thing we will we'll, we'll be doing in the near future is the uh, Baldwin series. And uh, one of our users in the UK, uh, Eric Hodge, um, who uh, is interceded on our behalf to get uh, permission to present that series with full view. Um, so whenever we can get uh, full view material, we're more excited about scanning it. Um, so that'll be coming up and uh, we're also working with another library. I can't make any announcement today, but I'm hoping that leads towards uh, more uh, world and ancient content. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, and just one other note, uh, with, with the brand and, and Johnson material you mentioned, um, kind of one of the strengths of the site is when we get these two collections that came from completely different places, the uh, Johnson papers came from uh, Newman and the brand uh, ledgers came from ANS, but a lot of those resources overlap each other because um, Johnson handled a lot of the brand material. So um, you get some synergy when these things come together from different places. Um, next question, uh, for a search of two words on a page, will search include if they occur on successive pages? Um, no, it will not. Um, and that's, that's a limitation of uh, search technology right now. Um, yeah, so and I, I worry about this because um, a lot of times uh, as historians, sometimes we think if you can't get search results, then it doesn't exist. But it might exist, it's just the, the technology isn't quite 
getting us all the information and you know we have to start uh, acting like historians did 100 years ago and actually learning as much as we can about uh, what's out there and uh, coming at information that way. So yeah, and that, that is a concern. Um, next question, uh, where can we send content to be digitized? Um, probably the best place is uh, St. Louis, uh, Washington University, where um, Kim manages our uh, scanning operation and is constantly dealing with uh, boxes coming in and boxes going out. Yeah, if you need something digitized, just reach out to Lynn and uh, he will provide you the um, address to where you will send it to and I will receive it and um, we will digitize it and send it back to the desired address. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, when you're viewing a document and left click to get the larger viewer, and I think it's actually right click. Um, I think you can just click on it on okay. the center. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, you only view a single page at a time. Is that correct? No. Um, that will act. So it'll go to the Internet Archive Viewer, and there's an icon on there, I believe, for single page or double page. Yes. So um, when you're looking at it in, in, in NNP, um, I think Lynn had it on one of the previous slides, but if you click on um, the wording at the top, it will take you to the Internet Archive um, uh, interface directly. What you can do is there is a um, book viewer button that you can click and you can actually read the item if it's like a book or so um, you can read it like, you know, with the left and right pages beside each other, or you can click on the single page and view it as a single page. But of course, like when you're looking at it in NP, um, automatically it will show it as a single page like view. Okay. Uh, next question, do you have internet only auction information? Um, this is a really good question. So there are a number of efforts out there that are aggregating auction information, uh, six bid, CDN, uh, a couple others I'm probably not mentioning. And in general, the approach we've taken with Newman Portal is we don't want to duplicate other people's work. Um, so uh, we could have started our own database and uh, started developing all of that information, but um, you know, did we really want to spend our money doing something that someone else had already did done? So um, yeah, so to answer that, you know, generally we don't have um, uh, internet only information. And that's a huge issue going forward because uh, Clearly, printed catalogs are going the way of the dodo bird, um, and many times they're only uh, produced in very limited quantities. Um, so we still have a ton of work to do in terms of capturing uh, what's out there. Um, but for the long term, um, you know, saying we don't do internet only stuff is is not a good answer. So, um, but that that's kind of the, the lay of the land right now, at least. Um, does the organization have any interest in collecting coin club presentations that are recorded? Um, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we've, we've gotten uh, a lot of these from uh, uh, especially clubs like uh, Numismatic Bibliomania Society. Um, and we do have a lot of those in, in our multimedia section. Um, and probably power. PowerPoint files uh, or photos, et cetera, could be included. Yeah. Um, so, for example, um, the uh, Kona Club uh, in, in Ohio uh, sends us all of their pre presentations. Um, so, those are posted on there. Um, so, yeah, we, we love to add material like that. If you have access to it, um, please forward it. Um, the other nice thing about those is they're born digital, so we don't have to do a lot of processing on them and they can be added very quickly. So yeah, I would appreciate any help in locating that kind of information. Uh, one of our frequent users says, uh, thanks for all you do, especially with my insanity. Uh, hey, no problem. Uh, <laughs> and the, the, the content uh, being added if, uh, from this user is uh, exceptional and uh, very useful. Uh, for people with that uh, particular collecting specialty. Oh, 
Oh, um, I wanted to add one last thing. Um, we now have our um, audio digitization specialist um, who is available to digitize VHS tapes. So if you guys have any VHS tapes that you would like to see um, on the NMP portal, uh, we can now digitize them for you guys. So. Yeah, and I've gotten, we've had a, a number of cassette tapes that come out of the early like 1980s 70s period when it became uh, a little bit easier for people to take portable tape players around. So there are, there are a few numismatic things from that period. Of course, once you get into the 90s and 2000s, it's more video because uh, people had access to that equipment. Um, uh, it, uh, but uh, there definitely is uh, audio content out there that uh, we've captured. I think we have about 100 audio items right now. Tim, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. Since I have lens here as well, uh, is there any bit of technology that you're just dying to have? Uh, you know, since lens here, perhaps he can, uh, you know, order for you. But um, I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything. But uh, you know, is there anything on the day-to-day -day workload that you're just like, God, I wish I had such and such to just make everything easier? Yeah, uh, well, I'll let him answer. <laughs> well, to be honest, um, our, and not to, you know, toot my, our own horn, our team's horn, but I feel like the equipment that we have is so, um, you know, state of the art and just amazing that there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we have that we just do not need. Um, the DT Titan, um, I didn't get a chance to mention this to you all last time, but we could actually um, scan transmissive items as well. Um, there's been quite a few like um, 35 um, microfilm slides that I've just scanned um, that Lynn has provided for me. Um, I'm actually about to add them into NNP um, when I get back. But, um, you know, it's a whole different workflow that we use. Um, a whole different camera lens that we swap out with the original and um, the light source is completely different, but there was so much stuff that we had purchased. Um, the Misha is something um, that we're hoping to uh, look into getting in the future so more things can be digitized um, that, you know, again, wouldn't otherwise be seen by the naked eye just because um, of that hidden text. Maybe things were washed over and stuff like that. So that's kind of um, the next thing that we're planning to get or a must have, as I can, should say. But um, so far, there's so many things that now we can digitize that most others can't. Like I mentioned, um, the VHS tapes, um, now that we have a person that's available, it's not digitized in our lab, but it is digitized um, down the hall. And we do have a person on our team that can make this information available. Um, her and I work closely together. Um, there were some tapes um, that Wayne um, Homerin actually sent to us uh, that are being digitized currently now. And, you know, of course, eventually we'll add them into IA and then NNP. And the same thing, um, we're definitely utilizing our image collections. There's already quite a bit of transmissive materials that I've already shot using the DT Titan. So. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Jesse, the other answer to your question is I would love to be able to scan large format material at ANS, which we currently can't do uh, for a number of logistical reasons. Um, but that's probably the, probably the, I, I would say, the biggest uh, need in terms of equipment. Um, it would, uh, there's some just wonderful uh, folio sized items here that we would love to do and currently can't. And uh, just to be clear, that's here at ANS. Right. We can scan large yeah. objects <laughs> yep. um, on site for us. So if you really need something that's you know large and oversized to scan, we can actually do that. But as Lynn said, you know that's a need for definitely here at ANS. Yeah, the 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 large format uh, Titan scanner in St. Louis goes up to several feet. I mean, it's just gigantic what it can do. So that's not a problem there, but. Uh, at ANS, it would be nice to be able to scan uh, a wider variety of things uh, on site. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, doesn't look like there's any more questions and we're nearing the top of the hour anyway. So I guess we will wrap it up. Uh, unless there's anything that you guys wanna add. Um, nope, sounds good. 
Kim, Len, thank you so much uh, for giving us long table number 147, what's new at the Newman portal. Uh, everyone have a great afternoon.